starting sometime after the, the turn of the century, the 1900s, the blue whales in particular were commercially hunted and their populations were taken down to a few percent of where they were originally, you know, the carrying capacity of the ocean. I mean, imagine if 99 out of every 100 people disappeared from the earth, you know, there'd be huge social adjustments. And I think the whales went through that same kind of thing. John Hildebrand is a professor of oceanography at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. He studies the population sizes of whales by recording whale songs. Generally, a song is made by a male who's trying to either attract a female or, or repel a competitor, another male. So we record a lot of the song. This is a high-frequency acoustic recording package, and um, the sensor is, is called a hydrophone, and the hydrophone just converts a pressure signal, sound, in the ocean to an electrical signal. This is the, the frame of a high-frequency acoustic recording package, and what it does is it allows us to drop the instrument down to the seafloor by attaching a weight. And so at the time of our earliest recordings in the 1960s, it's a time when the blue whales off the coast of California and other places around the world, they're maximally depleted. There are very few animals relative to their normal populations. And we came up with this idea that the whales had shifted their, their songs as a response to the low densities, that they needed to project the song further because there are fewer animals. It's, it's a greater distance to the closest female. The hypothesis that we're putting forward is that the sh shift downward in frequency is a response to the increasing population of the, of the animals, that as the densities go up, the distance to the closest female is shortened, and so you don't have to have a song of high an amplitude. We found a steady linear downward shift in the pitch. In other words, the animals had decreased the pitch of, the, of their song by about 30% from the 1960s till today. So the declining pitch means blue whale populations are on the rise, a very good sign. At any particular season, all of the blue whales synchronize the call. There's not some at high frequency and some at low frequency. They synchronize the, the call to within half a hertz. It's all the same. So they must listen to each other. And if, if an adjacent male is singing a lower song than I am, I know I'm in trouble. So I have to follow him down to that frequency, even though I know that it's going to drop the amplitude. It could be that the females are using simultaneously the pitch of the sound and the amplitude of the sound to judge the size of the male. Only a big male, one with a lot of air in his lungs, can make a sound that's both low frequency and high amplitude. It was a surprising result that just by uh, measuring song, we could see these other you know, important properties of the population. So it, it's, it's partly a story of how you can't always predict what you'll learn in, in science. 